My goal for this video is to help you understand when we have a region, how can we write a limit of a Riemann sum and an integral to describe the area of the region. Let's have a look. First, let's say we have a function looks like this, y is equal to f of x. And we want to go from a to b. So this right here is the region that we want. To find the area of this region, we can use a lot of rectangles. But to do it consistently, we are going to use equal width rectangles. How many though? We want to have n many of them. It can be 10, it can be 20, it can be 100. But eventually, we want to have infinitely many rectangles so that we can fill in the whole thing. So that's the idea of a limit of a Riemann sum. The Riemann sum is just for the sum of the areas of the rectangles and then we want to take the n to infinity. So how do we do that? I will tell you. You always will have the limit as n going to infinity and then because we are going to add up all the areas of the rectangles, you are going to have the summation and then we are going to use the running index i it goes from 1 to n, you are going to have these two parts all the time. Next, we are going to write the width of the rectangle, or the base of the rectangle, times the height. Let's write down the height first. The height is the y value of the function. So we can just look at f of x, but we will have to use different x values. So we write that as f of xi, Take that for a notation for now. That's the height of each rectangle. And then we need the width of each rectangle denoted by delta x. So now let's talk about how can we compute delta x first. This is the width of each rectangle. And we want all the rectangles to be equal width so that it's consistent. Hmm. We are going from A to B and we want to cut this into n pieces. So each piece which is denoted by delta x, it has to be b minus a because that tells us the distance from here to here and then divided by n, just like that. So that's what delta x will be. Then, suppose we are going to cut this into n pieces. I'm just going to draw three of them. You can look at this right here for the x value. Go up and then draw a rectangle like so. So we have to use this x value. And to do that, well, we start at a, we will have to add this much. And this much is b minus a over n, which is just the delta x that I put down right here. So what we can do is, you can look at this as a plus one delta x, because that's the first part. And then next one, we can use this x value, go up, so we hit the curve, and then we can draw a rectangle like so. And for this x value, well, we start with a right here, and then we add the delta x twice. So it will be a plus two times delta x for this x value. Similarly, for the next one, use this, go up, draw the curve, rectangle and that will be a plus 3 right the third one already delta x and then up to the last one b will be equal to a plus we use n rectangles so it will be n times delta x and if you put delta x right here you will see that the n cancel a cancel and then you just have b so here's the deal. For the xi, xi, that will be equal to a plus whatever the i is. And then just multiply that by delta x, which is whatever this expression is going to be. And I would highly recommend you guys to figure out the delta x first. And I'm going to show you guys a few examples later on, but for now, keep that in mind. Now, we're done with that. For the integrals, check this out, this is super cool. This, it's a Greek letter sigma, the capital sigma. The lowercase sigma looks like this, right? This is sigma, lowercase sigma. And this is also sigma. 
Why would you seek mine? Because for some, meaning we're adding things up. This lowercase sigma is usually for standard deviation in statistics, but we're not going to talk about that. Anyways, integral, you can just think about it as the super version of that. So sum, we are going to have the super version of it. All we are going to do is just stretch it vertically. Here's the integral symbol. And then integral is super cool because we just had to put down our starting x value and then the ending x value is just a to b. And then we are going to put down whatever the function is. And this right here is the height of the rectangle, right, of each rectangle. And we still have to multiply by the width of each rectangle. Earlier it was delta x, but right now this is like the super version is dx. Why the dx though? Well, because we have to do something with the derivative. So this corresponds to that. And you always should have dx or d whatever for your integral. So now let's actually see some examples on how we can convert from a Riemann sum to an integral and then the other way around. Okay, so let's start with number one. We have the limit and also the summation, just like what we talk about it. Okay, let's start with number one. So for this, you should first pay attention to the over n part, which is right here. And in fact, pi over n here will tell you the delta x. I know earlier I put the delta x at the end, but let me tell you, most of the questions will put the delta x somewhere right here. Yeah, anyways. So n is on the bottom already. That means the top right here will tell you b minus a equals pi. So that means if you start at 0, you will have to go out to pi. If you start at 3 pi, you will go out to 4 pi, etc. Now, we have sine, most likely the function is sine of whatever. And then right here, we have the i already. And then the delta x is the pi over n. And notice that the a in this case is just going to be 0. So we can convert that into the integral going from 0 to pi because we started at 0. And then the function is just sine of this input and we use x. And then don't forget, you should always have the dx. And then we are done. Now, let me tell you, you can always start with 0 when you go from a Riemann sum to an integral. But I'm going to first follow this formula for you guys first. For the second one, Pay attention to 4 over n first, because this tells you the delta x. Especially the top though, we know b minus a is equal to 4. So that means, if you start at 0, you go up to 4. If you start at 17, you go up to where? 21, good. Okay, so, let's see. We have square root, and now we have the 1, which that will tell us about the a, okay? So let's go ahead and have the integral starting at 1. Because we are starting at 1, we will have to go up to 5. Right? 1 to 5. The difference is 4. And then you see that we have the 4 right here over n, which is the delta x, and then multiply by i, so that's that. So in this case, this whole thing, right? This whole thing is our input. So the function is just square root of x. And then, of course, put on the dx. So if you follow this format, that will be the answer. But didn't I tell you guys that you can always start with 0? Check this out. So right here, if we start it at 0, then we will have to go up to 4. And then here we have to be careful though. Earlier, the function is just square root of x. But right now, because we're starting at 0, you will have to have the 1 in the function. So it's square root of 1 plus x dx. Now let me explain why they are equivalent. This thing here is the area under the function y is equal to square root of x. And we go from 1 to 5, so it looks like this. And that's the region. Okay, now for this function, What's happening is that because we're adding 1 directly to the x, so we're moving the square root function one unit left. So it looks like this. This is y equals square root of 1 plus x. 
And if you move this one unit to the left, and starting at 0, which is right here, and you go up to 4, don't they have the same area? Sure thing. I just move this one unit to the left, and I end up with that. They have to be equivalent, of course. So now, number 3. Okay, 1 over n. So this right here tells us b is e b minus a is equal to 1. So if you start at 0, you go to 1. If you start at 5, you go to 6, etc. Here, we have 3 plus i. If you follow this format, you can start at 3. So if you start at 3, then you have to go up to 4. Okay. And then in that case, you take this to be the whole thing for the x in the integral. So it's e to the x dx. And you're done. Or if you want to start at 0, like what I told you guys earlier, then in that case, you go up to 1. And then you are just going to use this right here for your x. So it's 3 plus x in the exponent here, e to the 3 plus x power dx. They are equivalent. If you would like, you can just draw pictures to see that. So that's it. Now we are going to see how to go from an integral to a Riemann sum. Here we go. Here, the first one is the integral going from 0 to pi over 4 tangent x. So you always have the limit as n going to infinity, the summation, the running index i going from 1 to n. OK, first, let's compute the delta x. And we just have to do b minus a divided by n. So let me do that right here. So we will have pi over 4 minus 0 over n. So it's just pi over 4 over n, which is pi over 4n. And usually, when you write a Riemann sum, you put a delta x right here. All right? So for this one, we will have pi over 4n. Always figure this out first. Next, we are going to have the i xi. Next, we are going to have the xi into the function here. And remember, because a is 0, so we just have to plug in i times delta x into the x here. And that will give us tangent of i times the delta x, which is that. And then we're done. Okay. Next, 1, 2, 3, right? So delta x will be 3 minus 1 divided by n, which is 2 over n. So we have the limit n going to infinity, summation, i goes from 1 to n. Put down the delta x right here. That's 2 over n. And then notice, here we have the a plus i delta x into the function. a is equal to 1. So I'm going to be plugging 1. So let me just write that down. We are going to be plugging 1, right, because of this 1, plus i times delta x, which is i right here, and then delta x, which is 2 over n. So it looks like this, into the function. This whole thing into the x. a plus i delta x, right there. And technically, we are done. Unless you want to kind of simplify a little bit, but of course, this is preferred so that you can see what the delta is, delta x is, and then what the input, what the a is, etc. Now for the last one, let's write down the limit. n going to infinity. Summation, i goes from 1 to n. OK, let's compute the delta x right here. 8 minus 3 over n, that's 5 over n. So let's go ahead and put that right here, 5 over n. And then we have the function 1 plus the square root. So it's square root of 1 plus the x. Now, for the x, we have to replace that with what? a plus i delta x. a is 3, so I'll put it here. And then plus i delta x, which is that 5 over n, like this. So this is a little bit trickier because Sometimes you can see that we can work out 1 plus 3. In that case, you can also do that. But I prefer to leave it like this, so you can see the a plus i delta x. Okay?